So welcome back to our review as read. Today we'll be talking about the Primarchs from the Horus Heresy series. Now this is a compilation story from several authors, many of which are mentioned right here. And these are basically sh short stories that are involved in the Horus Heresy in between the major novels, but did not, at least in length, warrant a full story or novel on their own, so they were compiled into this book. On the Primarchs, and of course, the basis of all the short stories is tying to a certain Primarch in the storyline of the Horus Heresy. And if you don't know, a Primarch is the leader of the Space Marine Legions in the Warhammer 40,000 world. And just to let you know that the people involved are Falgrim from the Emperor's Children, Ferris Manus from the Iron Hands, Lionel Johnson from the Dark Angels, and Alpharius and Omegaron from the Alpha Legion. Now today's review we just talk about each of the stories and of course as a whole the book, the pros and the cons, and it concludes. So let's get to it. Now Reflections Cracked, the first story, is the whole reason I bought this book for my personal collection. Because if you've seen my review on the novel Fulgrim from the Horse Heresy series, you know it's one of my favorite books of all time. And like I said, the story itself is very complete. Just like a movie with the after credit sequence, this first story is that to the Fall Green book. And because I like the book so much, it just gives to me that, ex that it's like an extra DVD thing. Like I said, for me personally, I feel that this, with Reflections Crack, you get a real feeling of who Fall Green is and will be as an overall whole in the whole Horus Heresy. But like I said, if you just read Fall Green by itself, it is still a complete story, but like I said, because I like the whole Horse Heresy series, and I like the book Fulgrim so much, felt like I had to get basically this story whenever I finish Fulgrim, I'll move on to this book's Reflections Cracked. Now, as a story, Reflections Cracked is not bad. I mean, it's not great either. The The good things about it is it does bring into completion the, what happens to Fulgrim and the whole situation that was left at the end of the novel of Fulgrim. But the story itself has not the, how you say, the impact of the novel Fulgrim. Reflections Crack is basically, like I say, a tying up story of what happened to the Primarch Fulgrim. And so, therefore, there are a lot of things that happen in it in the wider scheme of the Horus Heresy doesn't really matter other than the main focus of that story, which, say, all the build up to that part is inconsequential. So when you read it, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad writing. There were some parts which were actually quite good. But a lot of the twists and turns in the story building up to the ending of Reflections Cracked, they were already explored in a much longer and more deeper way, like I said, in Fulgrim. So like I said, it was more of the same, but not as good. So I did not regret reading it, obviously, because it gives a completion to Fulgrim. But at the same time, I don't think it's great. You know, I was okay with it. I didn't regret reading it, but neither did I hate it. Next is Feats of Iron with Ferris Manus of the Iron Hands. And this story takes place before the events of the book novel Fulgrim. Now, this particular story, to me, was not that bad. It was actually quite interesting. At the same time, I wouldn't call it a great story, but the reason why it stood out a bit more is because everybody has their personal bias to all the Primarchs. And many people like certain Primarchs over the others. But for me, I love Logar, for example. But I completely feel that Lion Johnson is one of the most boring Primarchs ever. And so this is the reason, because I felt the Iron Hands, although interesting in concept, Ferris Manus himself doesn't have a very distinct flavor as a Primarch. It's basically like he's very grim, very brooding, and he's very utilitarian and all that. And as his, and as his personality, I don't feel anything really interesting from that particular Primarch. But this story strangely does something that for the most part I think was pretty cool in that because they it's kind of weird to say but they took away from Ferris Manus quite a bit most of the stories dealing also, with how the Legion deals with the army units because the Iron Hands their whole thing is flesh is weak the flesh is weak so they replaced their body parts with machines and all that and how is it they came to see that relying only on iron that means all the mechanical bits and all that is also a weakness so it concentrates on not only the Primarch, but the people outside the whole Legion, how the entire ethos of the Legion came to be. And then, of course, the creation of the Chain Veil, which were the human units, not Space Marine units, that came to 
be like the elite infantry, human infantry of the Iron Hands. Now, there is also a part inside where Press Manus has to deal with an alien who basically tries to show him, not to spoil anything, but basically show him the way, so to speak. And that part was also not bad if you read Fulgrim. If you haven't read Fulgrim, I don't, I don't think that part would resonate much. But at the end of the day, that part was okay. That part, like I said, in the whole story of Fitz Iron was the least interesting to me. And on top of that, the whole story has a very nice pace in terms, like I said, without the parts with Ferris Manners. You know, how the Legion move forward is moving too fast, outpacing supplies, issues and all that. Fitz Iron, not bad. But like I say, only for me without the parts with Ferris Manus. But because I read Fulgrim, even those parts were okay because they actually tied in the whole situation to the book of Fulgrim. So the next is The Lion. Now The Lion, of course, is with Lionel Johnson of the Dark Angels. And like I said before, Lionel Johnson is probably, to me, what most people feel about Roberto Gulliman of the Ultramarines. I feel that Lionel Johnson is the most boring Primark ever because basically he's a warrior king, like he's like a warrior knight, like King Arthur. And how many times have we already read stories on this particular warrior king who had to deal with all kinds of problems, he's very burdened, and he's a great strategist, and so on and so forth. So it's very fantasy trope to me. But overall, as Dark Angel stories go, which I don't usually not that keen on, this one again, not bad but not great. The reason it's not great is because, like I said, overall I feel the Dark Angels and the and their primer, Lionel Johnson, is not that interesting. Every, like every Dark Angels book, they, they fight and how the Legion works and all that, which is very by the book, you know, and then they're being chased with some space battles, again, very by the book for the Horse Heresy by now. So that part's all very traditional. It's not bad, not good. Like I said, the write, all the writing for the Horse Heresy is usually at least standardly good. So that part's not bad. The interesting part is comes when they actually delve into, like I said, this is pretty cool, that they actually delve into the darker side of the prima of Lionel Johnson. Like I said, my problem with Lionel Johnson was that it's very liking after kind of thing, so there's nothing very interesting about him. But now they're starting to touch, in at least the novel, the Primarchs, on the idea of the darker side of his um, personality. But Lionel Johnson is one of those Primarchs which people argue it could have been in contention for the War Master role that Horace got and how is it he held the resentment and they touch on basically how the entire Legion like their Primark Lionel Johnson was on the tipping point of basically turning to chaos you know because of ambition and all that and there is something in the story which I won't spoil that he does that he takes weird gratification in which really made it interesting to talk about that, like how tenuous it was that Lionel Johnson stayed loyal to the Emperor, which is not a spoiler because anyone who knows 40k knows the Dark Angels are loyal space marines. The last story is The Serpent Beneath. Now this is of course about Alpharis and Omegaron of the Alpha Legion. Now the Alpha Legion basically have twin Primarchs, right? One is basically, officially only one is known, which is called Alpharis as Omegaron. Think of it like a hidden shadow Primarch. In fact, it's even much eluded to this, at least to all the novels that I read, that even their fellow Primarchs do not know of the existence of Omegaron, which is the other unknown Primarch. And in fact, they can both interchange because obviously the twins. Now, Serban Beneath basically talks about how there's an infiltration the, um, on one of the bases of the Alpha Legion. And the Alpha Legion, is the whole, their whole shtick is basically that they are the like spy masters of the um, Space Marine Legions. And so they go through this whole process of how does the Alpha Legion Prima infiltrate Alpha Legion bases. And that's basically, think of it like a Warhammer 30,000 Oceans 13. You know, they go through the whole planning and everything. And it's actually, in terms of the good of it, a really good story on how to put twists and turns in your story. Because, like, if you read a lot of Alpha Legion stories, many of them always say no matter who they are, they are Alpharius. And there are twists in the end of whether the person who they keep mentioning in the entire story is Alpharis, whether it is Alpharis or not, is, was it Omegron doing something and all that. So again, not bad. That part is always very interesting and how they infiltrate and everything is also, most of it makes sense. And it's actually quite interesting how actually they do things where you go, hmm, the problem of course with all these stories about perfect beings infiltrating a 
legion that is almost perfect at subterfuge is of course that invariably you get plot hole you know there are situations that happen in the story which you go like if they were the perfect people that knew all these ways of infiltration why didn't they protect against that the primarch was better and all of that and then but you say but if the primarch was better wouldn't he have taught that you, again it's those twists and turns where because their space marines are just supposed to be so elevated above mortal beings there are situations where you go a, a space marine with a higher elevation of intelligence would have missed that because i would have thought that you know it's one of those things but overall, the story itself was not so plot hole heavy that I felt like I had to roll my eyes all the time. So in conclusion, as you've been hearing throughout the entire review, the book is not bad and not good. Do I regret buying it? Not really, because like I said, I got it for the completion sake of Fulgrim. But do I love it? Not really. Do I regret reading it? Not really, because I would like... I want to know the whole Horus Heresy series and what happens, the stories. and all. So I don't regret reading it one time. But do I feel like I need to go back to it all the time? Not like Fulgrim? Not really. You know, the stories are okay. They're not bad. But un- and like I said, again, if you read this as a self-containing book, the problem is a lot of stories won't have any much a deep an impact if you don't know what, hap- what they are referring to in terms of storyline. So unless you're a huge fan and you read many of this stuff, I would say you don't need to get this. So thank you very much. Till next word.